Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Today we return to Spectre Operations and the Conflict Dubala series with Part 3, Operation Archangel. We begin tonight's game with the briefing. So uh, I'll read the entire briefing here in the intro. And then when Andre gets here, I will brief him on his part and what he needs to know and what his objectives are. But other than that, he's gonna be left in the dark as to exactly what is happening. Background. Between the intel gathered by Task Force Padilla in Operation Gadget and the intel secured by Task Force Mountain during the cordon in search of the Al Hassan district, the coalition can now confirm there will be a handover of money from the OTP Order of the True Prophet, to Trader Army Officer Colonel Murad for the purchase of a warhead. The first part is the handover of the money, after which the warhead will be recovered at a yet-to-be-determined location. Situation. The time and place of the money transfer has been, de been determined to be taking place at a small village outside of Mursaka called Majdi. Majdi is a hostile village sympathetic to the OTP. Colonel Murad is expected to arrive at noon and again meet with Salim Al Salam, second in command of the OTP. At that meeting, a briefcase full of money will be presented to Colonel Murad by Salim Al Salam in exchange for the location of the warhead, which will be retrieved by the OTP at a later date. A PMC known as Arbok Security has recently arrived in country for unknown reasons. They have a bad reputation, so it would be no surprise if they were hired by Murad himself for personal protection. Enemy forces. Forces on site will be small as this is to be a clandestine meeting. Salim Al Salam himself as well as his bodyguard Mongo will be there along with a cell of FOS soldiers. Colonel Murad will be arriving with an unknown bodyguard force. An unknown amount of local militia will also respond once the fighting begins. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the terrorist force. So first we have Salim Al Salam himself here on the cell phone. He is a professional sergeant, assault rifle, pistol, grenades, comms, and long-range comms. With him is his bodyguard, Mongo. Mongo is a professional soldier, light machine gun, body armor, and pistol. Over here we have Colonel Murad. He is a professional commander, heavy pistol, long-range comms. We also have four new models. I just got these guys done. These are the Arbok operators. Each has body armor, pistol, Close combat weapon, comms, trauma kit, one each frag, smoke, and stun grenades. The Arbok operators are commanded by Alex Chuck Williams, elite sergeant with carbine, red dot, scope, and long range comms. Uh, Chuck is named by one of our new patrons, Chris Pretty. Uh, I don't know if you guys listen to Rules of Engagement podcast. It's a Spectre Operations slash Modern Wargaming podcast, but uh, Chris is the guy who does that. And it's quite good, so I would uh, definitely check that out if you're into modern wargaming. Uh, next to him, we have Bill Thompson, another one of our patrons. He is armed with LMG, red dot, and laser scope. Next to him in the red hat, we have Luke Lankowski, another one of our new patrons, armed with carbine, underbarrel grenade launcher, red dot, and scope. And finally, we have Harry Elsden, another one of our patrons. He is armed with carbine, red dot, and scope. So this is going to be an all uh, patron battle report. So I'm pretty excited about that. So we got our four operators. They are being paid by Colonel Murad uh, quite a bit to come in here and guard him for the money handover. So now we'll talk about the terrorist deployment. Salim Al Salam and Mongo, along with four fangs of the Serpent soldiers, will start anywhere in the target building and await the arrival of Colonel Murad. So this is the target building here. So they'll be anywhere in here. They can be on the roof, they can be here, however the uh, terrorist player likes. Colonel Murad will arrive in a two vehicle convoy consisting of one van and one technical with Dushka. They will arrive from the north on turn four and drive to the target building. So they'll be coming down this road here. They'll drive up to the target building and go inside for the meeting. Uh, the militia reinforcements, there will be militia once the firing starts and one of the terrorist leaders makes the call. Militia reinforcements will arrive three turns after they're called. They will arrive in squads of seven from random boardage. Uh, the meeting itself will last four turns. Then Colonel Murad and his uh, bodyguards will reboard the vehicles and leave the table. That is it for the terrorist part of the briefing. Now let's take a look at the good guys. 
Here we have the good guy force, task force operators. This is task force Montelongo. Each operator has body armor, pistol, close combat weapon, comms, trauma kit, one each frag, smoke, and stun grenades. So in overall command we have Captain Michael Montelongo. He is one of our new patrons and he's taking command of all the operators in Dubala. So he is an elite sergeant, um, not running elite commanders as they are a little too good. So elite sergeant at least gives a small uh, chance to fail some of the uh, tests that you have to take. So Montelongo is armed with silenced carbine, red dot, laser, scope, and long range comms. Next to him we have another elite sergeant, Master Sergeant Greg Padilla. Uh, Silence carbine, red dot, laser, scope, long range comms. Next to him in the blue base, we have Sergeant First Class Scott Driscoll. Silence carbine, red dot, laser, scope, combat shotgun, and breaching kit. So he's the uh, breacher for the unit. Here we have Staff Sergeant Steve Russell, LMG with red dot, laser, and scope. Next to him, we have Staff Sergeant John Baldwin, silence carbine, underbarrel grenade launcher, red dot, laser and scope. Next to him here we have Staff Sergeant Nick Starkweather, silence carbine, red dot laser scope. He's also packing an AA-12 auto shotgun. And here we have Staff Sergeant Jens Kopke, silence carbine, I'm sorry, this is Staff Sergeant Nils Vesterman with the LMG red dot laser and scope. And on the end here we have Staff Sergeant Jens Kopke, silence carbine, red dot laser and scope. And then up here, we have Staff Sergeant Dan Klain. Heavy sniper rifle with ghillie suit. And he's accompanied by a spotter with a light sniper rifle and ghillie suit. So again, all these guys are patrons. And I appreciate it, so thank you guys. And I hope you guys can do good against the new patrons who are gonna be on the bad guys side this time. So uh, now we'll talk about the uh, actual mission that these guys need to accomplish. Mission. Task Force Montelongo is to interrupt the meeting in progress and capture Colonel Murad and kill or capture Salim Al Salam. Capturing Murad, Murad alive is critical, while capturing Salim Al Salam alive is preferred, but not critical. Doing so will allow the coalition to determine the uh, location of the warhead. If both are killed or either escape, the location of the warhead will remain undiscovered, as it will likely be moved, at which time a true crisis will develop when the world learns that a rogue nuke is loose in Dubala. Task Force Montelongo deployment. Uh, they can deploy from any table edge in any configuration they prefer. Sergeant Klain and his spotter can deploy anywhere on the board in a prepared position. And the Allied player will mark this position on his map. Terrain-wise, we've got a lot of uh, buildings on the board. This is Majdi, the little village outside of Mursaka. I do have my new Black Sight uh, studio terrain. So i got the uh, Rashid building and the slums pack, which is these two and, and these booths here. Um, Really, I mean, in this game, terrain is it is a big deal, but it's also not something that you can pin down as it only really affects how much of the enemy target is uh, exposed and, and what your negative modifier is going to be. So there's not a whole lot to talk about, but we'll say that the tops of this building, this building, this building are going to be 50% obscured for target standing on it. These got a little bit lower top wall, so that's only going to be 25% obscured. And if you're behind these... Um, barriers here it's going to be 50 percent obscured as well all the vehicles are drivable so if you if task force montelongo decides to get in a car and try to get out or anyone for that matter it, it is something that can happen and all the all the uh, buildings are enterable so everything is pretty much interactive on the map uh, we're going to say this is tall grass so it will uh, we'll say it'll obscure 25 percent if you're in it and that's really it. So um, we'll go ahead and let uh, Andre get here. I'll brief him on what he needs to know. And then we will get started. Oh, and the uh, Task Force Montelongo will have the initiative uh, in the first turn of the game. So Andre's arrived, and uh, we're going to uh, go over his force, how we broke it down, and then we'll let Andre go over his plan. He's been briefed. So starting uh, over here, we have uh, Alpha Team. This is Montelongo in the red. Starkweather is in the green. Kopke is purple. Baldwin is blue. Bravo team is led by Padilla. Red. Blue is Russell. Orange is uh, Vesterman. Purple is Driscoll. And then Lieutenant Dan and his spotter. So for myself... It's uh, Sergeant. Oh, I'm sorry. Sergeant Dan. Demoted yeah. for this uh, scenario. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, 
myself, I put uh, Salim Al Salam and Mongo on the bottom with two of the fangs of the serpent soldiers, and I put the other two on the roof within four inches of each other. And that's really all I can do. So the only person that really has a plan here is Andre, <laughs> and we'll let him. That's uh, a little different. Go over the plan. The operator plan. Well, here we go. So I've got a lot of firepower that I can bring to bear, but. Uh, in true operator fashion, I'm going to really be focused on trying to do this with some stealth. So, I've got a uh, sniper is actually super close. He's going to be right here in this building, which, as you can see, it's got a little hole looking out towards the entry road, which the van is going to be arriving down. So he's got eyes on there, and then he's got a nice uh, view into the front of the building. The reason for this is I want to try and take the van, hopefully right around the intersection or the car. I'd like to catch it a little bit before it actually gets to the entryway. Alpha Team is made up of suppressed weapons and is coming in right here. They're going to combat sprint over to the side of the building, along the building, across the front and make an entry into that rear build into that building next to the dumpster door, which will get me four operators in this building with access out the front here, hopefully doing an ambush right out by this car. So how this all plays out is really going to depend on how fast the car comes down the road and exactly where I'm able to get as it's coming down the road and the positioning of Travis's boys up here if they are facing in the correct direction then I'm not necessarily going to be able to ambush out um, it's well I'm going to be spotted he, if he has line of sight and he's facing me, I'm going to be seen. So because I don't really have any cover here, um, I'm, it's, that's what I'd like to do. We'll, we'll see. Maybe I'm going to have to take those guys down on the roof before the uh, van come, I take the van. If uh, things just don't play out nicely, I might have to let the van actually come all the way in allow them to go in and maybe I take everybody while they're in the building maybe I actually wait till they come out I could even take the van as it's pulling away on this side I've got my Bravo team is gonna come in over here and try and get up against this wall here place their demo charges they've got a nice shot into the upper part of the uh, building if they want to toss some uh, stun grenades there but uh, that'll give me a second uh, breach point which will allow them to come in I've got the two LMGs in that team so they're going to be a really loud group that's going to have some serious firepower so what I'm hoping is that I can get the breaching charge set and detonate the breaching charge come in with the LMGs and at the same time have already taken down the van gotten a prisoner and have the uh, rest of my operators coming in firing from a second direction at which point I'll also have the sniper being able to pick off anybody on either two sides of the assault side of the building um, downside I don't know if uh, Travis would actually try and escape out the back. Um, I don't know that that's... Uh, I'm not too worried about it because of the wall and all the open ground there. So I think I got a pretty good shot of having everybody corralled and not having to worry about anybody actually escaping. So uh, it's one of my more intricate plans. I usually don't have it quite this well thought out. But, uh, you know, I got a, a plan A, a backup plan B, and we'll see uh, if any of that actually happens or if it uh, winds up being totally different. Anyway, catch you in a bit.
So those are the plans. So what's going to happen, Andre is going to have the initiative. These guys are going to move randomly, or they're going to point in a ran random direction when it's, whenever it's my turn. And uh, these guys are fangs of the serpent. I don't think I actually explained them at the beginning, but they're professional soldiers with body armor and assault, uh, assault rifles. So Andre will have the initial phase, so he can go ahead and start deploying. So Andre moved uh, this team up here. This is Montelongo's team with Starkweather, Kopke, and Baldwin. And on this side, he brought in Bravo team, which is Padilla, Russell, Vesterman, and Driscoll. So you got your Breacher, your two LMGs here, along with the uh, Padilla. Over here, you got the A12 LMG, underbarrel grenade launcher, and Montelongo with his carbine. As for me, I'm going to just roll to see which way these guys face. So this guy here, he's just going to turn that way. This guy here, he's going to turn that way. And. That's it, so now we roll for initiative. So we'll roll for initiative. Andre's a five, and I'm a five as well, because I have professional commander Salim Al Salam. So, so tied. we tried to not give it to anybody, but Travis wants All I can do really is roll for direction, so he's just gonna stay facing that way. Uh oh, he's actually gonna start looking this way. It is daylight, and they are aware, so any of uh, Andre's models that pass in their line of sight at all will be detected. Yeah. Uh, so now it is Andre's, uh, face because we don't have any commands no combat so we'll let Andre do his move. So Alpha team Montalongo and his boys ran around this way. Over here Bravo team uh, planted the uh, breaching charge on the wall and they, these guys both went on overwatch facing down both sides of the road so back to initiative. This is turn three by the way so you got it. Um, so turn three, so the next, the start of the next turn is when uh, Colonel Murad is going to show up. Andre just sprinted Alpha Team into this building. These guys are just going to stay put and I'll just roll for these guys. So this guy here. This is kind of looking the same way. The other guy. And that way. Alright, so now it is turn four already. And Colonel Murad will now come in, but let's roll initiative here. <laughs> Does that mean you're nice, to win? Scattered ice ain't here. You it. scattered to win. All right, yeah, I scattered. So you have the uh, initiative. So I move before you. Well, first, okay, so it's initiative command. Do you have any commands? I don't. That would be overwatch or something like that. Right. And if not, it goes to movement and tactical phase. So it would be your movement. Andre just moved Alpha Team tactically up to the uh, doorway to get a firing line out. And Colonel Murad and his entourage have entered the board 16 inches uh, movement. And that's it. Initiative, Andre. You got it again. Ooh, look at me. So Andre's, I have driven up. Andre is going to spring his overwatch. He's gonna hit the gunner and the driver of the van. So it's, he's at a five, I'm at a three. So. Actually a two on the driver of the van. So driver first. Okay. So that's an eight, so I could tie that. No. So he's hit. So it's a lethality roll. He's killed. So you kill the driver of the van. Okay, okay. the gunner. Ooh, Ooh. six. I think that's a Yeah, hit. I can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. And he's dead as well. Okay. So the gunner is dead and the driver of the van is dead from the two guys, two of the guys in the in the building. And okay. And I'm thinking my sniper, who's now going to become visible. Okay, so sniper's going to fire. Fire, and he's going to take out this guy up here. Okay. Oh, so no, he can't. No, no, this is Overwatch. We're still in your movement phase. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> okay, then my firing phase. Actually, can I move them now? I, actually, I could. No. Actually, you want no. initiative? We screwed it up. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. How do we screw it up? Because you do your movement, I do my movement, and then you do your firing, I do my firing. Okay, so I did my movement, right. then you did your movement. Yeah. I sprung my overwatch. That's, okay, that's part of my movement. So it's now combat. Yeah. So now it's combat. The only thing you didn't move was up here. That's true, so I could move them now. Mm -hmm. All right, let me think Sorry, about just keeping it on the screen. Oh yeah, we got Richard yeah. here. A new friend, Richard, he's uh, here to uh, learn how to play Spectre. So if you hear another voice in the background, that's what it is. Ignore it. Yeah. 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, move these guys. Finish my movement by moving these guys over here. Now that they're alert, because I heard the gunshot. Actually, now that I think about it, I think it actually happens next at the start of next turn. What's reset? Happened? What happens? They, they can actually. They're not really. I mean, they heard the shot, so at the start of next turn, they'll be alert. Okay, this guy was more over. The question was: Was was that shot in Overwatch? Yes. Yours. This one? No, from no, over here. This one. Yeah. So now he's going to. In that fire case, they're still in their movement phase. So but they, they weren't. React. But they can't Even really. They weren't alert. They're not really alerted yet. So they are now. So next yeah. start. Of next start of next turn. So go ahead and roll your uh, sniper shot, with Lieutenant Dan. A two. Okay, I'm a two as well. So you're a nine. So I can't even. Yeah, I oh. can't. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Even with an eight. So he's hit. So a two plus with a heavy sniper. Ooh. <laughs> oh, he does not kill him. Wow. Interesting. So the fangs of the serpent soldier has been grazed by the heavy sniper rifle. <laughs> and is now my combat phase, and that's it. So next turn. I need initiative this time. We can do it. Giving it to you. I got Colonel Murad on the board now. You're all help. Now we're tied. So. Oh, we don't need to keep track of turns Ooh. anymore. Ooh. I got it. I got to do something. <laughs> Colonel Murad has, uh, since he's on the board, he's a professional uh, uh, commander, and we're fighting against uh, elite sergeants who are also uh, five, so uh, we got the initiative. So my movement and tactical phase. So I actually lost Chuck Williams. He was the gunner. I rolled randomly, and it was poor Chuck who was hit um, by the overwatch. The driver of the van was not one of my operators. He was just a driver. The other two guys were in the back. So they moved out. And they are going to throw a frag grenade into that room because they know there's fire coming from there. These two guys move tactically up to the edge because I heard the fire coming from here. So uh, movement and tactical, they moved and threw a stun grenade, not a frag. Uh, they did not move tactically. They're just going to move up and they're going to throw a frag, uh, frag grenade in. But the stun grenade did hit, so everyone in here's stats are reduced to one. And now Andre is going to try to blow up the... Uh, Breaching charge. On a 4 plus, Andre will reach the wall. <laughs> no! Breaching charge goes off, does not reach the wall, so he can't come through. Now, what you could do, Andre, is push each other over with the uh, leg over if you wanted to just try to go over it. Uh, you could try to do that because it's a taller obstacle, but you could do the you know boost up over the wall type thing since the charge didn't go off, or you could plan another one. I think on next time you try it, since you already tried it once, it's going to be three plus. Okay. It's a reach, so. <laughs> so that was movement and tactical for both of us. Well, so I've still got my movement though, right? Uh, do you have more movement? Well, I can. Oh, the other guys, yes. The other guys that haven't moved can move. Only the guy that tried to blow up the demo charge can't move. So Driscoll can't move, but the other, the other so three guys can. So can he give them a leg up or? Um, Andres finishes movement, so he sprinted uh, this team around, Bravo team. Alpha team is stunned, they can do nothing. Uh, he has been notified, but they can actually activate, or they can actually react until the start of the next turn. And what I'm doing right now is we're trying to figure out if these guys can spot the ghillie suit guys. There might be a chance that they can spot them on a high roll. I'm not 100% on that, so we're going we're gonna to look it up. On a 3+, plus, these two guys will spot... Or, uh, Sergeant Klein here. Minus one for the Gilly suit, two plus for being professionals, just over 12. Two plus, so we do spot Sergeant Klein and his spotter. I thought it was, he needed a three. Was it two plus? That's three plus. Oh, three plus. Damn you, Andre. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, we didn't spot him. Actually, I got two different guys there, so. Hold on a second. Now I'm rethinking. Okay, okay they spot him. So one of the two guys sees him. So we do see him. So, hey, one of the guys can shoot at him. And it is now combat phase. So these guys are going to throw a frag in. So let's see what we got going on in Oh, here. shit. Hold on a second. Look at all so actually the rules were I have to roll a six to spot him. And I did. So we have spotted him with one of the guys. So one of the guys will fire. The other guy will be alerted next turn. They're going to throw a frag in here on poor uh, Alpha Team and uh, Montelongo. So two plus, got it. 
So a frag went off. So I threw a frag in there and they were all within one inch of the uh, inner blasts. So they're all down. Next, these two guys, or one guy is gonna fire at these guys. So we'll just fire at uh, this guy here, the spotter. I don't wanna kill Lieutenant Dan yet. All right, so we're professionals. All right, so it's gonna be uh, two uh, professional soldiers, uh, five, we'll say minus three, just because they're where they are. So it's gonna be shooting skill up two versus Andre's defensive two. So six and a one, Andre. So this is on the spotter, so roll the six. That's a hit. And uh, yeah, so one hit, so lethality of four plus. He's down. The spotter is down. We are keeping track of suppression, but with so many elites and stuff, it hasn't really came up. Um, so they do have one, which there's not really a lot more shooting to go. So it is your shooting and tactical phase, which the truck is blocking line of sight to them from here. And at the start of next turn, they'll be alerted to them. So I guess it's back to uh, initiative, unless you have some, you don't have any combat, did, did, did right? Did your sniper shoot at all? Oh yeah, it's sniper could shoot. So Sergeant Dan could actually might fire. Well shoot the guys at the top. The that's Dragon Raider. Kind of what I was thinking. Okay, order of this. That's it. Definitely a hit. Actually, I roll that. So okay. it's five. So you're yeah. I don't think I can even beat that. Even with a six, I'd be at yeah. I can't beat that. Because you're at seven. I'm at three. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't want to happen. I can actually figure this out. So yeah. you're at uh, you're at seven plus five. What's that? Twelve. Twelve. So I'm at nine. Yeah. So I couldn't do it. So I'm hit. <laughs> so heavy sniper rifle. Two plus. Yeah. So you got one of them. And then they take a suppression. They have a suppression. They're all hit, and that's it. So back to initiative. Yay. <laughs> oh, I got the initiative again. Not good for Andre. In the command phase, I tried to have Colonel Murad, car, or uh, he, him or El Salam call for the militia. They failed. The cell phone call did not go through. And Andre was able to get uh, these two guys here onto Overwatch. All right, so I moved these guys back. Colonel Murad moved back. He's moved up, and then he's moved loot, or Keep one going, Lieutenant Dan. Sergeant <laughs> Dan has moved up, and they're, they're going to throw three stun grenades. Four. Four? All, everyone's going to throw a stun no. grenade? No, no, the, the no. The one, one back. Down. All right. So, yeah, you hit one. You hit them all. So they're stunned. And combat now. So, uh, so we're at one on all of our stats here because we're stunned. And let's see, what else do we want to do? Uh, combat phase, so I could shoot even though I'm gonna be at one, but I might as well, right? So we're gonna yeah. shoot at him. Can we? So he moved now. He's a uh, he moved, so he's no longer the whole ghillie suit thing is out of the uh, out, right? It's still minus one. Still minus one to spot. Do I have to spot him still, even though he just threw a stun grenade. Uh, uh, <laughs> shooting. I was gonna try to shoot at him, but I can't hit him. Uh, minus two against. I'd be shooting at uh, with the stat of one because of the sun grenade. Minus two for this. Yeah, so I can't do it. So Andre can shoot at me though. But so what I should have done is actually come around the corner. During your move. Oh no, then, then I could have shot at you. Yeah, but you're stunned. You're still at minus one. But oh, it would be easier. One. But I wouldn't. I would at least have a chance to hit you. You would. But I. I don't have a chance to hit uh, Sergeant Klein here. This but I is true. would have a chance to guy to hit a guy standing out here. Okay, so which one of your dudes do I want to take out? I don't know. So that, that's up to you. So anything wet for Andre? Woo! Okay, <laughs> you got it. Two. <laughs> you got a hit on my dude. Actually, hold on a second here. Andre cannot fire Sergeant Klein because it is an encumbering weapon, which means it cannot move and fire. So we just move on to. So all he 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 just went like this. Well, he I would have had him. He threw a stun grenade. We'll see initiative here. <laughs> I got it again. Yes. Oh, this is saving me. Oh, Lucas. So I was able to get a hold of the terrorist uh, 
a militia. They're going to be coming in in three turns. Threw a smoke grenade here to block my sight through here. Andre went on Overwatch. <laughs> threw the smoke. Thinking he had. Uh, I went on sights. Overwatch before you threw the smoke, but anyway. Uh, technically. But I was trying to figure out if it blocked my sight. Because if it didn't, I guess I was going to throw it either way. What the hell did <laughs> <laughs> So uh, it's, that's it for uh, command. Now we can move on to movement and tactical. End of movement and tactical. These guys moved around here. We ran out the back with El, El Salim Al Salam and his boys and Mongo. Uh, Bravo team has run back this way. And uh, Sergeant Dan Klain has moved out of the building. Now it is combat phase and we have no combat. So, all right, Andre, can you get the initiative back here? Do I care this turn? Well, this would be the turn to get it if you I don't, don't want think it. I care. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously don't care. But I got it do. again. All right, so these guys can move up to the wall and start boosting, and they're just going to keep moving. And so am I, so... So do you have any commands? No. No commands? Uh, I probably don't either, so I'll move right into movement. All right, so a quick recap here. So inside this building, uh, we have Montelongo, Starkweather, Kopke, and Baldwin all down from the frag. Sergeant Klain is running over there. Bravo team over here, Padilla, Russell, Vesterman, and Driscoll are trying to move around this way. Meanwhile, uh, Al Salam and his boys have moved up ready to boost over the wall. And over here, uh, these guys uh, are moving off the board with Colonel Murad. So that is it for movement. Now on to shooting and tactical, which, I mean, shooting phase. No one's in line of sight. Or wait a minute, no, I was gonna say, uh, Sergeant Dan, maybe, but he's encumbered. he's encumbered. Yeah, so he can't shoot and move. But he could take a shot on the way out. Um, all right. Initiative. <laughs> I can beat that, Andre. <laughs> no. Ooh, I might get an initiative. No. Oh. Andre's got the initiative, finally. The command phase, yep. Andre has no commands. I have no commands, so it goes on to movement and tactical. Do you have any... Uh, tactical movement or any kind of tactical action to do, Andre? Um, so it's movement and tactical? Yes, so you can throw non lethals. You so can... you can move first and then throw non lethals? Yes. Okay. I moved over here, he moved there. They moved over there. Uh, could not get off the board, but they're close. And so it's combat phase, and I think the only one that has a shot is Sergeant Klain. So he will take a shot. Okay. And... He'll take a shot at my dudes over there. Combat phase, Andre is going to have uh, Sergeant Klain. He's going to try to kill Colonel Murad. So a three, so that's what, a uh, ten? Minus one, so a nine? And I don't think I could beat that. So two plus, you kill Colonel Colonel Murad. Colonel Murad is down. He's killed Colonel Murad, which makes it impossible for you to win this mission. Just so you know, you have to take him alive. Well, uh, guess what? <laughs> the next I lost this thing. mission a long time ago. <laughs> Okay, so we move on. I don't have any combat, so we just move on to the next uh, initiative phase here. You're rolling my dice now. Yeah, we got a lot of ties here. Come on, baby. Yes! We got the initiative. My best the roll terrorists. of the night. I got a five. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Command phase, I had nothing. Andre uh, put Sergeant Klain here on Overwatch. And that's it. So we're on to movement and tactical. And I will be Actually, bringing in a militia oh, squad. Oh, we did... And they will be coming in on this edge. What's up? Yeah, I was thinking, did we do uh, um, initiative yet? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I won again. I forgot about so that. movement tactical, I'm just going to move off the board over there with my uh, Arbok operators. It's a hit. I can't beat that. No, he oh. doesn't kill anyone. So. Oh, man. That was Thompson, Lankowski, and Olsden. They One's wounded. One got winged on the way out, but they're still alive. <laughs> so Lankowski was hit, but... He'll be back. Maybe on your side next time, Andre. These guys are, they'll, you know, they just sell their uh, services to the highest bidder. So they're off. 
and movement wise I think I'll move these guys around. Salim Al Salam, Mongo and the last two uh, Fangs of the Serpent dudes ran around and then the Squadron Militia ran in from this edge just to the edge of this connex here and it's your move Andre or Andre can do movement with okay. or uh, so he's moving Bravo team back this direction. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and call it here. Mission complete, but what we're gonna say is Task Force Montalongo, once everything happened, these guys got off the board, Salim Al Salam, and the Fangs of the Serpent and Mongo made it off. Uh, and streams of squads of terrorists have been coming in. Task Force Montalongo, what's left of them, has pulled back into the target building and they fortified it. These guys are in here, they are not dead. Uh, Alpha team is not dead. Uh, but they are wounded, and they will be need, need to be rescued. Bravo team will need to be rescued. So what's going to happen is the 10th Mountain Division and whatever operators are left in the area are going to come in here, guns blazing, and try to reach the target building. So that will be the next game in the campaign. So, Andre, what was your plan? To see how badly I could screw up, and uh, I got a mission accomplished. <laughs> that was your plan. See how bad I could screw up? Pretty much. Um, so I made the same mistake I usually make with this. You know, we played so many games against the, uh, you know, the elites against the militia, and I overestimate. And well, I didn't tell you that that I was going to have operators coming in. You didn't. But that was the surprise. Well, I also could have probably figured out that our initiatives were going to be close together, and I could have still pulled this up. If we played again right now, I think I could probably have a decent shot at it because yeah. I got my head in the game now. You know what to expect now, yeah. Well, and even if I didn't know about the operators, but um, I needed to uh, have multiple overwatches. I uh, didn't, you know, ask, is this a reinforced concrete wall instead of the normal mud walls? <laughs> um, so, you know, it you know, blowing a hole through didn't work, so basically everything I tried just fell apart on me. Um, and... But that doesn't answer the question. What was the question? What was your plan? My plan, well, uh, to, as the uh, cars pulled up, so long as the guards weren't facing the right way, I had my uh, spotter here that had line of sight seeing the cars coming up and telling these guys when to jump out and spring in the uh, ambush, uh, pinning all of this down with the suppressed fire that you wouldn't hear, but of course you would because you're too close. So um, yeah, it really wasn't quite right from the get-go. Okay. Um, I'm could have possibly set up the ambush differently so that I was actually hitting the cars from far enough away that you wouldn't have heard the suppressed fire. Probably, I don't know if that would have been a better plan or not. Um, I really wanted to be close enough that I could come up and assault and make a quick grab, then blow the uh, wall, distract, come through, and secure. But, uh, didn't happen. Oh, for all that planning, um, <laughs> the only thing that uh, went right is I got two kills off of my Overwatch, which took out the, uh, took out Chuck Williams. Well, and eliminated the, uh, but heavy... he'll be, Chuck Williams is going to be revived. He'll be back. He's not dead. Sort of like these guys in here. So we have, uh, in here is Alpha Team. We have Montalongo, Starkweather. Kofke and Baldwin got hit by a frag. They're not dead. Or they won't be dead if you can get in here and rescue them, I should say. Yeah. So time is of the essence. So you weren't accounting for... Well, the main thing it sounds like is the uh, initiative. Well... You're used to getting the initiative as the I'm operators using, militia. Yeah, operators automatically get initiative pretty much. Usually. Unless and there's other operators or even... Uh, professional uh, le uh, leaders, like I had Murad, yeah. who's so, dead now. Murad is now dead. But I couldn't kill him initially, so I had to, you know, account for not getting the initiative. But um, just 
really forgetting thing. You know, it's like throwing four frags. It's like, yay, I was successful. <laughs> it did. Stuns. It stuns. It had absolutely no effect other than it let you shoot at one of my guys. Yeah. At the stun uh, grenades. Of ones. <laughs> the stun grenades only last to the end of that turn. So but throwing them. I'm used to it being a really good thing because normally it is. Operators always have initiative, right? It well, was good for me when I fired at Alpha Team be yeah. because I stunned them; they couldn't move. You had the initiative. You, yeah, wiped them. And once that <sighs> happened, I knew I had this game. Oh, without two teams. I once, mean, once they jumped out, it was like, oh, you can throw a stun. I'm toast. <laughs> and a frag, yeah. Well, even once you threw the stun, I was toast. Yeah. Um, like it is fired in too. So, realistically, um, I should have uh, not had the sniper uh, so close. Well, that didn't really matter, but um, I should have had a team in here and possibly a team here or. I needed to spread my guys out and make sure I had my overwatch set so that I could fire plenty of overwatch or fire during my main phase but still have overwatch out so that any additional movement like jumping out I could then tap you again and if I'd have done that I could have uh, suppressed this whole thing but I really wanted to hit this at the same time. This was all going to be basically simultaneous and I thought two <laughs> teams of four was going to suffice. I thought so. Um, but clustering a bunch of dudes up, again, I'm not used to that being a problem. Um, basically I just get overconfident when yeah. I have the operators because oh, I'm used to them just being these uh, invincible dudes, uh, supermen. And, um, <laughs> and they are know, when they're going against militia. But not against other operators. And it's just, I, I, I got to get out of the mindset of, uh, you know, super dudes. Yeah. I'm going with bad intel. <laughs> Definitely bad intel. Well, no, it is the right intel. Everything happened exactly as the briefing said it would. <laughs> <laughs> operators. <laughs> well, yeah, Andre didn't know about those. Uh, there you go, intel. Ar Arbok Security International. Uh, these guys are uh, bad reputation private military contractors. Well, that and. Uh, the mud wall with the reinforced concrete and yeah, brick couldn't inside. Yeah, couldn't get through the wall. Actually, I don't think you would have got a wall, got through the wall even if it was lower because I think you rolled like a two or something on that breaching charge roll. Maybe, I don't know. Well, well yeah. anyway. I, Dice were against you. Yeah, so it's uh, it was a good game. So next game, uh, we'll probably play the same table and what will happen is um, Alpha Team will be trapped in the building. They'll be terrorists around. Uh, all the uh, operators, the Arbok operators, things of the Serpent, uh, Al Salam, will be gone as they fled. And of course, C Colonel Murad has been killed by uh, Sergeant Klain. Uh, so, Sergeant Klain, Alpha Team will be in here. There'll be waves of enemies coming in. So, it'll be uh, kind of an Alamo style uh, game until the uh, 10th Mountain Boys, uh, Sergeant Smith, and Corporal Tudor show up with their. Uh, their uh, Humvee <laughs> and try to uh, rescue these boys so anyway so that's it for uh, this game so uh, thanks for watching and as usual check out our uh, Patreon page if you want to get in on this stuff yourself or our Facebook group if you want to see what's going on uh, with uh, the Tabletop CP community and other than that uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time